Hello and welcome back to our wonderful campaign in Imperator Rome and the 1.3 update. If you would like to play the game for free for a week, there is a link in the description. And uh, otherwise, well, I'm having a lot of fun so far and we are going to see exactly what's happening in this episode. This video is kindly sponsored by Paradox Interactive and, well, <laughs> where are we here? We have a researcher who is currently giving support to one of our pretenders. And that is certainly something that we don't really want, right? Yeah, we don't really want that. So we'll see what we can do about him. Now, that is also something that I must mention. The wonderful way that the developers have changed the game. They've made it so that everything is much more impactful. So when you're dealing with these families and the various other people that you are affiliated with, it makes so much more of an impact than it does than it did before the previous update. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're actually going to demand that he supports our primary heir because at the moment he is attempting to befriend this guy, which I think is I think that's fine. I don't really mind too much about him doing that to be honest, but the fact is is that what he's trying to do is he's trying to support this guy who is a pretender to the throne and we really do not want this guy to become our heir because if, if he does become our heir we will be losing a huge amount of loyalty and we'll lose a, a lot of stuff basically so we're going to demand support and hopefully he will then do that all right so as you can see pretender support the following people support one of the pretenders and then it, you know you can see who that actually is Anyway, we still have a bad research ratio. Not entirely sure how I'm going to really solve that apart from spending a lot of money to be able to do that. I'm not actually going to be giving any grain away. And I don't really want to give any dates away because we're actually doing pretty well in terms of our cash flow at the moment. As you can see, we've got 15 every single month, which I think is pretty good. Okay, so otherwise, how are we doing here? Well... We still have a little bit of cash. I've got quite a lot of units in my army at the moment. And as you can see, we are full up in terms of food capacity. So what do you say? What do you say we go over and we see exactly what's going on in this country? Because that is exactly what we want to do. We want to go over there and we want to see whether we can win in that territory. And indeed, maybe, just maybe be able to declare war and take it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the diplomacy tab right here. You can enter diplomacy on any country you want by right clicking on their territory immediately. And then you can do that. As you can see, we do need to do something like fabricate a claim. So fabricating a claim, basically this gives us a claim on a province and it grants the use of the conquest casus belli on the receiving country selected territories territories in claimed provinces are cheaper to demand in peace deals so technically what we can do is we can do that which i think we're probably going to and we will demand i don't even know which one is the best to demand at this point to be honest i guess we'll demand this one wait a minute where's the yeah the city i guess there we go and um, we have a diplomat en route who will arrive at the 30th of May. Okay, so that is absolutely fine. So let's continue and we'll see what actually happens here. Because, of course, my army does need to travel all that way. And they are going to take quite a while to get there. Now, bear in mind that the cool thing about having such a large, well, presence in this area is that you're going to be able to go over here to recruit cohorts. And what you can do is you can literally just click on whatever you like. As you can see, it doesn't seem to really give us any opportunity to get anything else with the exception of over here. Mm, that's kind of unfortunate. But the cool thing is, is that if you want to build archers, you can build these archers anywhere in your territory because they are the cheapest units. And I could also get these guys as well. What are these? Light infantry are they light infantry or something like that yeah they're light infantry so that might actually be something for us so what we'll do is we'll just build a couple around here to kind of give us a little bit of extra support uh if we end up losing a couple of units in the initial battles and it has already passed 
the time of the war declaration and my uh, diplomat has obviously gotten there already and so what we're going to do is we're going to take all these guys and we're just going to put them in here and we're just going to merge our units together basically and then we'll have an even stronger army to do what we need to do here which is of course to try and take over the territory. I haven't successfully done that before because I've usually had uh, a couple of other things to do and uh, usually I play this very diplomatically, very peacefully and I never usually do war that much but uh, <laughs> that's the cool thing about grand strategy. You can either play the very very long game or you can decide hey you know what I'm just gonna go super hard against this particular faction and see what happens. Anyway. The wealthier residents of Paraitonian have sent a formal petition on behalf of the entire province, complaining about the harsh ways of their governor, Philocles Margo. It seems that his taxation policy is causing quite a furore amongst landowners, who are having to work their slaves to the bone in order to meet tax quotas. It is certainly unusual for our subjects to complain in such a manner. Perhaps we ought to consider their arguments carefully. Okay, so basically this will give us some unrest if we side with him. We are also going to gain some corruption. We already have two corruption, and he will gain some uh, loyalty with us. This guy is actually really good. As you can see by his stats at the top there, he's got nine martial, eight civil, nine oratory, and eight zeal. He's really good in almost every respect, but he does have 10% corruption, so it might very well be that there are a couple of issues here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to send a representative to ensure rules are being followed. This is going to lose him 20 loyalty with us, which is unfortunate, but we're going to gain some popularity. And he's also, yeah, he's also gained 10 corruption. I guess we'll just do that and we'll see what happens. Okay, so now that's done, let's merge all of our units together. And we will now declare war against this faction. There we go. Let's do it. So we can show our superiority, and uh, that is exactly what we'll do. Technically, what we can do is we can ask Andros, Kos, and Dode Ka Shoinos. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good at pronouncing these names. They're just very long. Anyway, the point is, is that you can ask any of these allies to come and join you. As you can see, look at this. Andros is the subject of Egypt, subject of Egypt, and subject of Egypt. So they are automatically joining the war, which is actually really cool. And I'm just going to do that. There we go. We're not going to ask anyone else. And this is where we are going to lose some stability. As you can see right here, stability is actually very important. Because stability basically makes it so that you're not at risk for any kind of civil war. And me doing this without Cassus Belli is going to give us minus 25. So is there a way that I can do cast a spell eye. Well, maybe? Let's have a look. Mm, it doesn't, it doesn't, personally, it doesn't seem like it. As you can see, we've already done the fabricating of the claim, and there's not much else that I can do here. So, I'm gonna just go for it, to be honest. I'm just gonna go for it, and we'll see what happens. If I clicked on the right option. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so there we go. We've lost a little bit of stability, but that's fine. Don't really mind too much about that, because we're just going to head in here straight away, and we will try and take their main city immediately. So I will just go straight over there, because we need to make good use of our food. Personally, I have a lot of confidence that my forces will be able to tackle basically any other army that is in this area, and I think we will be completely fine, because Let's face it, we've already seen that these guys do not have access to iron unless they are starting to import it. Ah, here we go. And we also have the Olympic Games now happening. Once more, the renowned Olympic Games are due to occur in the city of Olympia. The traditions surrounding these games are ancient, reputedly dating back to the days of mighty Heracles himself. And they are an occasion in which all of Greece rejoices. It is our custom to send the proudest, most able young Egyptian athletes to compete on our behalf. We believe we have found two ideal candidates, a son of Apollo himself by the name of Margus, and a stout fellow who calls himself Leontiscus. 
Which of these fine athletes should we send to compete in the games? Well, this guy's got some really good stats. And this guy doesn't have very good stats. So I'm actually going to send this guy, I guess. And we'll see if that actually makes any difference. Maybe the stats don't really make, make any difference. And maybe it's just a, a, a dice roll or something like that. But who knows? Anyway, we're currently at war with these guys. Bad research ratio once again. Oh, a researcher is needed. Really? Oh, okay. Okay, we need a researcher. So we need to choose someone that's really good. We'll choose this guy. He seems pretty good. Uh, what's this? What do they want? It, grain. No, I'm not going to give grain. Because we want grain to be able to grow our cities and provide food for the people. That is what we're trying to do here. So we will try our very best. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Blockaded ports. Okay, so there we go. We now have a claim on a province of Arab Arabia Petria. This gives us a casus belli on the Levantine regional power of Nabatea. That's fantastic, which is exactly where we are right now. So that is really, really good. Now, hopefully, we will be able to take a couple of other things as well. And I, I, again, I have to be careful about my food, as you can see right here. It's already gone down by 20. We are losing five food every single month. So we are going to have to do something about that if needed. But we'll see. If this is indeed a status quo, ah, it seems like we lost. The great Olympic Games have come to an end with much rejoicing and celebration. The highlight of this year's Games was during the Pigmachia, a dangerous fist-fighting event. Tizios of Delmatia was disqualified after attempting to gouge out the eyes of his sparring partner, Glanthes of Athens. Overall, the victor was declared to be Menandros Onomarkid uh, Ono even of Chalcedon, a first-time winner of the Olympics whose brawn, virility, and Herculean vigor are beyond compare. He will go down in the annals of history as a champion of the Olympiad. All right, so how, how well did our guy do? Uh, this guy... Yeah, I think he's... Uh, my guy was better, in my opinion. Oh, well, maybe we need to look at their traits a little bit more closely next time. Okay, yeah, there we go. We're starting to increase our percentage here. So, as you can see, this is exactly what we want to do. We want to try and get supply shortage. The siege has been going on for 150 days so far. Wow. Yeah, the attackers will suffer a disease outbreak that reduces their number by 5% of their maximum strength if we get a bad roll. In the midst of a fallow season, Lagos Theosid, one of our most esteemed governors, held a vast and lavish party in his summer palace at Apollon... Uh, Apollon... Uh, Apollonopolis? Apollonopolis, yeah, that's that's an easy word to say. Why, why, why do I... Uh, I don't know. Anyway. Even his most loyal subordinates were shocked by this display of contempt for the plight of the common man and have written directly to us, demanding the uh, some manner of justice is served. Okay, demand, a, well, look at this, loses that, loses 10 loyalty, demand his resignation, local taxes plus 50%, and he'll no longer be a governor, loses 40 loyalty. You know what? I'm going to demand his resignation. There we go. I'm going to demand his resignation because he's not doing a good job there. So let's choose a different governor. Let's choose this guy. This guy seems pretty good. There we go. Nice. Maybe I should throw that guy in prison or something because he's probably going to try and assassinate me now or something like that. That would be funny. Age finds us all in the end. Ah, oh, here we go. Yes, we're not... Yeah, we have cancer. All right, we actually have cancer. So this is pretty bad. Yeah, he's not going to have much time left. He is going to die relatively soon. So let me just pause real quick and let's take a look at our characters here real fast. So this is our primary heir at the moment. He has 85% loyalty with us. He has 48% popularity, which is actually very good. Well, I, I hope it's I hope it's good enough because we have 94% popularity with our current king. So uh i think i think we're i think we're pretty good i think we're pretty good so let me have a look here yeah i think i think we should be okay if we, i can plan this guy's assassination if i want to but no let's not do that shall we okay so i need to take a look at our families here okay so Yeah, I, th I don't think anyone else has the possibility of becoming the heir. It is highly unlikely at the very least. This guy might actually be okay 
If this guy becomes ruler, then I don't mind so much about that because he is actually not a pretender. So we're not going to lose loyalty or anything like that with our subjects. So I think we should be okay to continue onward. Just got to be careful of our food because if the food thing happens, we're going to have some difficulties. So how are we doing so far here? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. They have a 21% chance to surrender now, which is really, really good. Next roll will be in 15 days. Hopefully that's going to be a victory for us. And then they will surrender. Maybe. Yeah, the defenders deserted. Very nice. That was a really, really good roll for us. Okay, so we're just going to continue leaving our little, uh, little army over there. And these guys are our allies. They're technically a subject of ours, so we don't need to worry about them. And I believe our uh, navies are doing absolutely fine. They seem to just be standing there, so they're not actually needed, I don't think. Oh, hello. Nabatea is actually over here. I'm hopeful that we might actually have someone to defend in that area. Ooh. That is something I'm going to need to do. Okay, so let's just pause here real quick. And I'm going to try and see if we can get some more people up and running. So let's get a couple of people in this area here. Just going to get as many as I can. Not, well, not, not as many as I can, but we're going to get a lot. Going to get a lot of heavy infantry or something like that. And they will be ready in about two months. And then hopefully they will be eligible to chase down any interlopers in our territory. Because as you can see, they've actually headed in here and are actually doing quite a bit of damage look at that it's occupied occupied by them that is not very nice at all of them is it but i suppose we are attacking their capital and they can't possibly do anything to stop us because we are literally with twenty-seven thousand troops that is just impossible for them to do anything against otherwise we are still having a decent amount there we go very nice decent amount of food and as you can see the siege lasted 378 days before the garrison finally succumbed to hunger and disease egypt now controls the province the garrison were allowed to march out wonderful that's great so there you go so hopefully we will now have control yeah so we now have control of this so we're now just going to continue walking all over the place and i'm actually going to give them a uh an objective so let's uh Mm. Yeah, that's not really... That's not... Fight is fighting rebels. Units attack rebel armies and besiege rebel-held territory. That doesn't really work. So we're just going to continue moving around here. There's a, there's a fort in this area as well. So we might want to be a bit careful about that. But as soon as all my forces... Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is fantastic. Yeah, this is really, really good. So these guys are actually helping us so considerably that they are taking back our territory which is great that is amazing for them to do that that is really nice of them okay very very pleased about that we'll probably have to help them in some way ah here we go so we have some pirates as you can see my forces are chasing them down these are my navy right here and they're fighting the pirates as you can see there we go we are victorious against the pirates and well, they're dead, I guess. Or we're chasing them off, at the very least. As you can see, there you go. They lost another couple of ships, or... Yeah. They're losing a couple of ships. Uh, or at the very least, they're, they're running away from us. We're losing a couple of things as well, but it's not really a big deal. Alright, so... Gonna have to do something about this. Ah, okay. An Egyptian ship has docked at the port in our city of Alexandria, carrying a priest of the Isis cult among its cargo. The Egyptian goddess has seen a growing cult in her honor with all the rites and celebrations one usually sees among the mystery cults of the Greek pantheon. The cult is certain to set their sights on Egypt if we let them and start sharing their teachings among our locals. Though we have heard a lot of good things about this cult, maybe it is for the better. Uh, local unrest will lose a little bit, will lose stability, which is not exactly what I want. We lose popularity, but he's going to be dead soon. So I'm actually going to bar them from joining uh, from joining us. Because that's probably going to result in much more... Uh, quite, a, quite a bit of a problematic situation, in my opinion. So we're just going to get every one of these little guys over here. 
I'm going to need to merge them all and then we will give them a general. And how are we doing over here? Ah, that is, that is Macedon. Okay, I don't need to worry about Macedon at the moment, I don't believe. So we should be okay. And Kos is also fine. Yeah, I think we're pretty good here. And how is that? Oh! Oh, 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 oh dear. Yeah, it seems like uh, our ally is having some problems with the first army down there. That is a bit problematic. I'm hopeful that Macedon will actually go down there and see what they can do and maybe assist us a little bit. Okay, so how are we doing in terms of food? I think we're... Uh, I, I, I don't know. I think that's fine. So yeah, I, I wouldn't say it is actually fine, but we'll, we'll try it. Anyway, we're going to tell them to defend their borders. And we'll use the bottleneck action, I think. Mm, we could do either one of these. I think we'll do the bottleneck action. I think that seems a little bit better for us. Okay, so they'll go off and do that. They have 8,000. And I should probably give them a general. So let's give them a commander of some kind. And we'll give them this guy. This guy actually seems really good got 10 martial ability. That's really good, actually. Very nice. Alright, so we're going to continue moving around here. We will be victorious relatively soon in this area. Or at least I hope so. Seems like it is kind of difficult. There we go. The Siege of Kusema is won. Fantastic. After only 240 days. That's great. How are we doing on food? Food is doing absolutely fine because we are ransacking all of these places and we're doing a pretty decent job of things. So we're just going to get that. And this, uh, do bear in mind, this is a pretty large country. So we're, we're having to do quite a bit to uh, make the most of it. What's going on here? Seems like there's a sandstorm or something going on. Okay, so that's fine. No problem at all there. And where's my army? Where's my other army? Where have they gone to? Uh, are they down here? No, they're not down here. Well, we need someone down here to... Oh, oh, great. Look at that. They burned one of my cities. Well, that's not very nice of them, is it? So, where's my second... There's my second army. Okay, so my second army actually needs to be going down there. As you can see, you can see where they're heading down to with this little arrow here. So they are actually making their way down. But they're a little bit slow for my liking. A little bit too slow, but maybe that's just how it is. Anyway, we have received an envoy sent by Archon Barossus, ruler of our subject, Kos. Oh, very nice. He offers our ruler... His personal friendship, strengthening our connection with our subject, could have its benefits. Yeah, sure. Why not? He's going to be dead soon, though. Our ruler is going to be very dead soon. So I'm not entirely sure how, how much that's really going to help us in the long run, but we'll try it. We'll try it. Okay, so, so far, I think this seems pretty good. We are occupying all of the regions, and wow, there's actually many, many more provinces to take, but this is 100%. Very easy to take that. There we go. And we'll do this one. Can I queue up actions, actually? Yeah, it seems like I can queue up actions. Ah, oh, no, it doesn't seem like I can. Okay, so we'll just take them one by one. Ah, uh, scandal is unfortunately part of an average day in the Egyptian court. Ordinarily, we would simply ignore such petty squabbles. However, on this occasion, the esteemed Nicanor Alexandrid was found in flagrante delicto with his lover Euthulia Lagid by his spouse, Demetria. Demetria, the spouse, overcome with despair, has appealed to the court to have Nicanor stripped of office as a punishment for his brazenly public vice. Oh, right. Okay, so let's see what she's all about. Uh, she's the wife of, the, of, of our philosopher, and he's got... Uh, he's got a pretty decent amount of philosophy skill, I guess, but we would pretty... Uh, she's actually part of our family, isn't she? Oh, that's not particularly good, is it? Uh, okay. This is none of our business, or we shouldn't tolerate it. Loses 10 prominence. He currently has 13. I don't really care whether he has prominence, to be honest. Mm, gains loyalty. Oh, okay, well, we might want to get her loyalty, but does it matter? Hmm. 
Okay, we'll just we'll just have him lose some uh, lose some prominence, and he'll be fired as well. So let's get let's get someone else to take over. Uh, can we get another Ale Alexandrid? Yeah, let's get this Alexandrid in there. Oh, he's only got three. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, so what about? Yeah, this guy can go in there, but now we have a scorned family, the Alexandrid family, so we're going to need to do something about that. So I'm going to pause in just a second after this event. As rulers of a foreign people, we have not always been embraced with open arms. The Egyptian clergy in particular harbor a deep resentment to our Hellenic gods. The Serapis cult mixes a number of elements of Hellenistic and Egyptian religion into a new syncretic faith. By promoting this cult in our state, we could perhaps bridge the gap between the Macedonian settlers and the Egyptian populace. By promoting this small cult to the faith of our kingdom, we might also shape it and use it for the benefit of the Lagged dynasty. Okay, so that's going to give Omen power minus 25%, wrong culture group happiness plus 10, pop, convo oh, pop conversion is very good actually. Yeah, I'm going to embrace them I think, let's do that. Okay, so we are going to change the uh, change the architect or whatever that may be, and we will make this guy that. Is that the guy that had the infidelity just now? I don't think so. I get mixed up between all these names, to be honest, but there you go. Okay, so they've all got 63 uh, apart from this guy. He does not like me one bit. I probably need to do something about that. Let's bribe him a bit, shall we? He's gaining 20 loyalty. Let's bribe him. There we go. So he's got now 63 loyalty instead of 43, so that's a little bit better, isn't it? Okay, so let's continue to conquer territory here. Or at the very least, not conquer, but occupy. And what do these guys want? These want these guys want papyrus. Personally, I feel like we're making good cash, but we're starting to lose it a little bit. So I'm still going to decline these trade requests, but I think it's still decent. Okay, import value. Let's spend a little bit more on some research and these people are supporting different uh, demand support for your air there we go i'm gonna have to do that and demand support for the air once again these guys are being kind of interesting is this guy wanting to assassinate someone no it's a claim holding uh-huh yeah, that's my heir, so I actually kind of want to make things a little bit more... A little bit more simple for him. Interfering in the scheme will reduce their success chance. What is his success chance? 28% so far. Yeah, we're going to do this. He's got 18... 8%. Okay, so that's pretty good, but his, his loyalty is now 51, but that's just how it's going to have to be. We can't really do much about that. In the midst of a fallow season, ah, oh, this fellow actually has now held another lavish party. This is really quite bad. We are going to, uh, I guess, demand his resignation. Yeah, we're going to demand his resignation. Why not? Okay, so we need another governor for this area. Wow. These guys are really not doing a very good job here. Okay, so this guy has 11 loyalty right now. I might have to imprison him or something. Okay, so let's do this guy. Why not? Okay, so how are we doing in terms of our government right here? Hmm. 41% popularity. Can I do something to increase his popularity? That's the thing. Maybe we want to do that. Maybe we want to find a spouse for him, actually. That might make sense. So, uh, it might be good for him to marry her, but that is actually from the same family, which I don't necessarily want to do. Prominent, cruel personality. Uh, not a big fan of that. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's another child. Diomedes. Okay, welcome. Uh, okay, I think I'm going to go for this. There we go. And we will arrange the festivities. Yes, that is fine. Very good. And now he is married. So maybe that's going to help increase his popularity a little bit. And we'll see what's actually going on here now. Okay, so has my 
this is my army, right? Yeah, this is my army right here. So I'm actually going to go over there and see if I can kill them. Because they're actually very, very close by. And they're actually within striking distance now. So we should theoretically be able to attack. If we can. There we go. Nice. Okay, so hopefully we'll actually get a win on this. Wow, we're actually not getting a win. Ooh, it's because we've got only heavy infantry. Yeah, I probably should have gotten some cavalry, right? Well, the thing is, is that I couldn't really get cavalry. Oh, there we go. We're actually starting to turn it around a little bit here. Yeah, but I couldn't really get cavalry because I don't have any horses. So I probably need to import some horses to be able to do that. But we're actually winning this by a very small margin, amazingly enough. So that's actually going not too badly. Yeah, bottleneck has a minus 10% weakness against skirmishing, and they are skirmishing, so that's primarily the reason why we're having some difficulties there. So I should probably change the bottleneck to something else, but I think we're probably going to be victorious there in just a second, so let's see where our other people are. Let's get them over here, and there we go. Yes, we are victorious. We did end up losing quite a few units, but that is to be expected, of course. And now they're going to run away, which is fine. I'm going to change to shock action, and we'll try and catch up to them once again. We still have a good amount of food. They are limping away, basically. So if we can catch up to them, I think we will have a really, really good chance of achieving some kind of victory. Well, a, a bigger victory, shall we say. And, and one that is definitely going to teach them a big lesson. Okay, come on now. Almost. Almost there. Okay, so these guys want grain. These guys want grain. No, I'm not going to give grain. Thank you very much. Okay, we're almost there. And uh, let's fight them. Can we Can we not fight them right here? Oh, it seems like we can't fight them until we have completely cleared the occupation. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, they're running through occupied territory right now, which is definitely making things much easier for them, unfortunately. Okay. Nabatea has a second army as well right there. But the, all of these areas are... Oh, hello. Uh, we can't actually go all the way through there. So I'm actually just going to go to the next area because we're going to have to go all the way around to be able to prevent that from happening. You know, to, pre to prevent it from being uh, cleared of occupation, that is. Yeah, I don't know where the enemy army has gone, but what we're going to do is we're going to just put them on defense. And they'll just go and do that automatically. And we'll just continue to walk around here and try and occupy as much as possible. Because the AI is going to take a little bit longer for them to do that. Anyway, the provincial officials of Marmarica report that the district has seen an unprecedented harvest this year. With great jubilations for ISIS being held in settlements large and small. These extra unexpected revenues could help bolster the food reserves of the province. But then again, such a gift from the gods is surely intended to benefit the entire Egyptian people. Okay, uh, let's have a look. So his popularity is diminishing. I don't really mind too much about that. Lose loyalty, lose loyalty, but we gain two food or 200 food actually. Yeah, we're going to do that. Oh yes, yeah, look at that. One of our friends is coming in there and actually dealing some damage to the army of our opponent. Really nice. Pretender support is still happening, unfortunately, so not entirely sure what we can do about that. I suppose we could, we could throw them in jail. Ah, oh, actually, wait a minute, I forgot about that. There's one guy that really hates us. I can't remember who it is, though. I think we just have to look through their loyalty. I think I can actually sort... Can't I sort by loyalty or something like that? I'm pretty sure I can sort by loyalty. There we go. We're victorious. And there you are. Yeah, look. That's a massive victory. Massive, massive victory. Look at that. Yeah. That's really nice. That is really good. Okay, so hopefully we'll continue seeing victories for us. Just got to have a look here. Gonna have a look at all their loyalty. Uh, seems all everyone's above forty percent so far. I don't think they were. Uh, no, nope, no, nope, there you go. No, everyone seems fine. So 
we should probably sort by loyalty this way. There we go. That's a little bit easier for us. Look at how many characters are actually in this area. So this guy absolutely hates us now, as far as I'm aware. He has 12 loyalty. Yes, he certainly does. So let's do something with him. Shall we execute him? <laughs> he needs to be imprisoned first. So let's imprison him first. There we go. And he's lost 50 loyalty. I mean, he only had 12, so it's not really a big deal. We're going to imprison him. And then we will execute him. There we go. He's gone. Okay, so that means that we don't need to worry about him anymore. Which is good. Okay, fantastic. So now we can continue onward. And we'll see what we can do about eliminating the second army that they have right here. Uh, what do they want here? Oh, they want livestock. Uh, that might actually be okay. There we go. We just squashed that army, that really, really small army. And we have captured an enemy. We will now be able to deal with him as we see fit. Oh, interesting. Ha. Huh. Okay, so we could recruit him. Can only be done on foreign characters. Ah, that's unfortunate. I guess, well, uh, not flogging. Uh, we could execute him. Or we could banish him. Uh, yeah, let's let's banish him. Why not? Let's banish him to... Where is the furthest away place that we could banish him? Uh, I'd like to banish him to the UK, maybe. So let's banish him to uh, somewhere around there. <laughs> if we could do that. Can we do that? I don't even think so. That's way too far away. Let's... Uh, mm, I don't even know. Let's just banish him there. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so that's pretty good. And now we'll see what's happening here. Okay, so we're doing pretty well so far. And we just need to get that other territory. I think... I think that's actually it. With the exception of this one little area down here. Ah, okay. So now let's, let's decide and choose who is actually going to be better here. He has... Energetic, arbitrary, and merciful. He has self-controlled, righteous, and merciful. I am going to choose Milon, I think. I think he's probably going to be a little bit better. And once our army is done here, we'll take them down to the last one. And then that should be a full occupation of this area, which is going to be really good for us. And how much money are we still making? We're still making 14. That's really nice. Okay, so a researcher is now needed for our martial things. So let's choose that guy at the top. He's basically the best one that we have at the moment. All right. The court is bustling with sycophants, claimants, and pretenders. It is of little surprise, therefore, that two of the most ambitious claimants to the throne of Egypt have found themselves at odds. Hmm. These conflicts have a way of getting out of hand. Perhaps we ought to step in and limit the potential for escalation. Aha. This is a pretender, and this is the primary heir. I was actually hoping that the primary heir would be... good. Hmm. Okay, we're going to have to do something about this. Uh, I, you know what? Let's just let them fight. Let's see what happens. I think that would be the most fun. So why not? Let's do it. Okay, so we've got a Macedon army over there. We've got to be careful that those guys don't decide to be like, Oh, uh, you're having some issues with this very small little faction? I might take advantage of that. You know, that would be pretty awful. Okay, so where's my other army right now? Gonna have to see where they are. Ah, oh, there we go. They're starting to just get rid of the last little bit. And there is Nabatea's first army still running around being annoying, as we've seen. And I think that's actually it. I think that is actually it for us. We have gotten all of their territory. And, uh... I think that's I think that's basically it. We could sue for peace. Uh, do, oh, we still didn't win this? Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. That is kind of bad, but oh well. Uh, I, think, I think that's actually it, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think we have... We've gotten all of this. So now I'm actually unsure 
The transfer of territories. Okay, so let's try and negotiate for peace. Okay, uh... Yeah, I guess all of that. It seems Timoleon Magid has gotten his hands on a lot of wealth, as he has started investing a great deal of silver into building a reputation for himself lately. Though it is unclear exactly where he found these riches, his efforts are surprisingly effective. With his increased popularity, Timoleon has started vying for a more powerful position in Egypt, shamelessly comparing himself to our leader. Right, oh, that's not very good. Okay, so I guess what we're going to do is we're going to try and discredit him as much as possible. Unfortunately, he seemed actually pretty good. Okay, so we're going to suggest this. And they accepted. There we go. Alright, so that is now Egypt. That is now Egypt. We have literally expanded so incredibly aggressively that we now have this territory and that is indeed gone. On Unfortunately, there still seems to be one little area here that is... Uh, ah, that's kind of funny. Still seems to be one little area there that is belonging to Nabatea, but that's nothing that I can really do anything about at this time. And I think that's going to be it for this episode. If you would like to check out the game and indeed download it for free for this week then you can definitely do that through the link in the description i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time